Hi everyone, I'm Laurentio and in this video I'm going to talk about all Tom Clancy's games for the Nintendo GameCube. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon is a port of the 2001 tactical shooter, but unlike the PC version where you could control 3 squads, here you can control only 2. But in Rust it has the same gameplay mechanic. You can edit your soldiers and choose their weapon loadout, during gameplay you can play as all of the soldiers and switch mid gameplay within them, you can issue commands like attack or regroup, and you can also tell your teammates to meet you at rally points by simply targeting the spot where you want them to meet and pressing a button. And there's a difference between the PC version and this one. Here you get a threat detector. The game tells you where the enemies are, which for hardcore Ghost Recon fans is a turn off because it loses its strategic stealth feel because you know where the enemies are from miles away. Also compared to the PC version, the GameCube one looks ugly. If you were to play Ghost Recon and had the option to choose, I would recommend you to play it on PC. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is a stealth game, and even if it is debatable, I dare to say that it's THE stealth game. The light and dark areas of the game aren't just graphics, you have to hide in the shadows and the game rewards you for being as stealthy as possible. Even if you can use guns, you get a higher score if you don't shoot anyone. And an even higher score if you manage to finish the mission without even knocking down someone. If you get in combat, you are most probably screwed, because your bullets don't do that much damage, but you take big amounts of damage. So the way the game is to be played is by using stealth. As I said, you lurk in shadows, wait for the moment, you can knock down enemies and hide them, you can use heat vision and night vision, you can use different gadgets like sticky grenades, smoke grenades, sticky shockers, and you can also use your gun. Though, as the game says, the gun should always be your last resort. It's also awesome that the mission objectives are varied, which means that you'll constantly have to adapt to new requirements. There are even missions where the game tells you to not kill anyone, or missions where you have to assassinate a target. The game is awesome and it aged well. Rainbow Six is about a special squad of highly trained soldiers sent in special missions to stop terrorist activities that would otherwise be too difficult for normal soldiers to handle. So in the games you do stuff like save hostages, defuse bombs and shoot terrorists. But the games are not for everyone. The game is difficult, even on the easiest setting. To finish a mission you will have to repeat a mission multiple times so that you can learn where certain enemies are or what path do they take and where the alarms are and what can trigger them. You can also issue commands to your teammates and this is one of the few games in which the AI is great. Your teammates actually contribute to the shootouts and help. And they are tactical too which means that you can rely on them. And that's really great to see. Overall, the games are great tactical shooters. Their graphics haven't aged well, but the gameplay still remains as tactical as ever, and I still enjoy playing it, even now, many years later. If you like tactical shooters that offer a challenge, even on the easiest setting, and want to play that sort of game on the on the GameCube, Try this two games. Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow has the same gameplay formula as the other one. The story is great, having some interesting plot moments, I'm not gonna spoil anything but just know that the story is pretty good in my opinion. Also the graphics have been enhanced, lightning is better and now enemies don't pass through walls like in the previous one. Also now you can whistle to lure enemies into shadows but don't think that the game is easier because you have this option. I've noticed that the guards are more alert in this game. If they see a body or if they see you even for a split second, they don't go investigate like in other stealth games. No, they immediately trigger the alarm. And that can be annoying. But in rest it's a really great game. Especially the music in Pandora Tomorrow is a big improvement over the other one. Because in Pandora Tomorrow the music is tense and is way more fitting 
to a stealth game like this. Clancy's Ghost Recon 2 is the non-Microsoft version of Recon, and by that I mean that the Xbox had one version and the PS2 and GameCube another one. And the two versions were so distinct that you can tell that they are different games. They even have a different story. What you get on PS2 and GameCube is the prequel to what happens on the Xbox. They even were developed by different teams. And the gameplay is what you would expect from the title. But to get to the gameplay, you first have to wait through long loading screens. And after all that time waiting for the game to load, what do you see? The frame rate chucks. As deep as the gameplay can be on this tactical shooter and as fun as Ghost Recon 2 can be, I don't recommend you play the game on an original GameCube. But the good part is that by using an emulator, you can fix this stuff. You can fix the chuggy frame rate. And with the frame rate fixed, it's the classic Tom Clancy Ghost Recon experience you would expect from a game like this. And it's awesome. So yeah, if you've played the game on Xbox, just know that the PS2 and GameCube version is actually a prequel of that one, so it's a different story. And if you've played this one, just know that on the Xbox, a new story awaits for you if you play the game there. In Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, the best addition, at least in my opinion, are the ragdoll physics. I love ragdoll physics in video games, they can lead to so many fun animations. And the ragdoll physics aren't the only animations changed. Almost all animations were redone so that the game will look more realistic. And the developers did a great job. In gameplay, a new addition is the sound meter. And it does exactly what you would expect. Also an annoying aspect has been fixed. Now guards don't immediately trigger the alarm as soon as they saw a glimpse of you. Now they go on alert and investigate leaving you more space to do your stealth stuff. Also now you have the ability to stealth kill enemies from ledges or when hanging, you also get new gadgets and you also get a knife, which is incredibly useful. For example, you don't have to pick locks anymore. You, can, you have the option of just busting the doors with your knife or you can do this. The game is awesome. Splinter Cell Double Agent is interesting. First, when you jump from the 360 version to this one, you can feel the downgrade. Graphics look incredibly washed out, and even in gameplay you can spot some differences between the 360 and the GameCube, PS2 and Xbox ones. And the gameplay doesn't have many additions when compared to Chaos Theory. But when it comes to the story, it's better. Yeah, you heard me right, Double Agent on PS3 and 360 has a different plot than the Xbox, GC and PS2 versions. It tells the same story, but it's told in a different fashion. And it manages to clear out some of the plot holes left in the PS3 slash 360 versions. So yeah, if you're a big fan of Splinter Cell, I recommend you play this version too. The gameplay is as solid as in the rest. And you even get some plot holes fixed. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.